Hello, I'm Peter Sullivan. I'm a postdoc in the Orontis Lab at Seattle Children's Research Institute. So thank you for joining me as I discuss the progress developing an FGFR targeted car for the treatment of rhabdomyosarcoma. Rhabdomyosarcoma, or RMS, uh, is a cancer of soft tissue and comes in two main varieties, embryonal or alveolar RMS. Uh, ERMS is a fusion negative subtype and acts primarily as a rasopathy and affects younger children. ARMS, however, is a fusion positive subtype and is characterized by the chromosomal translocation resulting in a PAX3 OXO1 fusion protein. Currently, the only treatment for RMS is chemotherapy, and the five-year survival rates are very low, particularly among patients with recurrent disease. Furthermore, survival rates have not improved for sarcomas since the 1980s, highlighting the need for new forms of therapy. So studies of the underlying biology of RMS have found that these tumors arise at multiple developmental time points, uh, kind of shown here in the top left. ARMS can arise from either mesodermal cells and all the way to the very left here, or it can arise from the mature muscle cells shown on the right side of the spectrum. ERMS, however, primarily arises kind of in the middle of the spectrum for the myoblast population. And on the right, you can see that ARMS, the fusion positive subtype, is driven largely by the introduction of an infinite enhancer loop of the PAX3, MYO1D1, MYOG, and FOXO transcription factors. So we go from the stepwise progression to uh, more of a loop progression which is what drives tumorogenesis. Another important aspect of RMS biology is a low mutation burden. Most pediatric tumors have low tumor mutational burden compared to adult tumors, shown in this graph on the bottom left. And this suggests that there are very few neoantigens for the immune system to be able to target. Largely because RMS has a low mutation, tumor mutation burden and no identified specific targets for small molecule therapy, we believe that RMS could be a candidate for chimeric antigen receptor, or CAR-T, cell therapy. This therapy uses T cells engineered to express uh, a receptor containing an extracellular antibody fragment against a tumor-associated antigen and an intracellular uh, simulatory domain used to activate the T cell, as shown in this cartoon on the, on the right of the slide. CAR T therapy has now been tested in many trials and has had much success in hematological cancers, but has not shown the same responses in solid tumors, as demonstrated by the clinical trial results summarized here in the table, which mostly result in no objective responses. Knowing these challenges, we set out to design a car capable of clearing RMS tumors by developing a highly effective car, and then armoring these T cells against the tumor microenvironment to overcome the unique challenges in solid tumors. The first step in the, uh, of this project was to find and validate a target in RMS. Specifically, we want to know which RMS-specific surface proteins can be targeted by CARs, and can an RMS-directed CAR actually control tumor growth in vivo? So RMS targets were identified using gene microarrays, comparing multiple types of pediatric tumors against healthy tissues. First, overall expressed, uh, overall, um, the ex highly expressed transcripts were identified. Then these hits were filtered out for cell surface proteins specifically, which is uh, the only molecules that a car would be able to identify. And finally, individually annotated for the most likely candidates that could be targeted by a car. From this, we arrived at a much smaller group of potential targets.
So the top hits uh, from this process included MCAM, FTFR4, Activin, and GPC2, along with other, several other cancer-associated genes. FTFR4 was cho chosen as a strong candidate that is, as it is upregulated up in both ARMS and ERMS and is expected to have little to no expression in healthy mature tissues. Though several other candidates on this list have also been selected for development. To validate FGFR4 as a potential CAR-T uh, target, uh, my predecessors looked at FGFR4 expression uh, by immunohistochemistry in the top left, RNA-based gene expression on the bottom left, and then total protein amounts shown on the right. And in each case, we see that the tumor tissues have much higher FGFR4 expression than the healthy, uh, healthy tissues do. And on the right, we see that even uh, among other tumor types, FGFR4 is much more highly expressed in the RMS-specific tumor types, shown in gray, compared to either the normal tissues, shown in black, or other cell lines, shown in white. And this suggests that FGFR4 would be a good CAR target, as there's a little chance of off-tumor on-target toxicity as the healthy tissues show very low expression of FGFR4. Early work on this project led to the development of a CAR that was able to control tumors in an easier to treat metastatic RMS model, with significant reduction in the tumor burden measured by in vivo imaging and an increase in survival, as seen in this data here. However, the same CAR was unable to control to control intramuscular or orthotopic tumors, <clears throat> suggesting that further development would be needed. Furthermore, when CAR T cells were introduced, the tumors responded by producing more stromal regions within the tumor, as seen all the way to the left in the H and E staining. On the bottom, with, or on top, we have tumor alone. On the bottom, we have tumor plus CAR T cells. And you see that there's this lighter colored strands, uh, which indicates stromal uh, regions in the tumor, but only when we treat with CAR T cells. Additionally, the vast majority of CD8 and CD4 T cells were localized to the stromal regions, effectively blocking the CAR T cells from reaching the lesion. Additionally, PDL1 expression was upregulated is likely priming these T cells for exhaustion. This data provided early hints about the tumor's defenses to CAR T therapy that would need to be overcome. My role in this project was to improve upon the previous CARs by screening new binding domains for FTFR4. I set out to answer whether we could increase the efficacy of the FTFR4 CAR and if this would be sufficient to overcome the immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment. Working with our collaborators uh, from the University of Pittsburgh, uh, they created new FTFR4 binders using a phage display library for hum fully human binders, uh, which included both SCFEs as well as single chain uh, binding domains. The original bait molecule, shown on the top left, used the entire extracellular uh, domain of FGFR4. However, we now know that targeting membrane proximal regions makes more effective CARs, so we screened a new bait molecule, which only included the IG3 domain of FGFR4. And uh, from this collaboration, we received eight single-chain binders, as well as uh, seven uh, SCFE binders. Uh, and the overall structure of these is uh, shown in the cartoons on the left. And for the seven SCFEs, we tested these in both the heavy-light and light-heavy chain orientations. 
Our binders were all fused to a CD8 hinge in transmembrane domain, a 41BB costim, and a CD3 zeta domain. We assessed car surface antigen ex surface expression using biotinylated FGFR protein to stain for FGFR4 cars directly. We also assessed the cytokine production, looking specifically at interferon gamma, TNS alpha, and IL2 cytokines produced. Uh, in response to cold culture with target cells. And not shown here, but we also assessed the cytotoxicity of these cars against their target cell lines. And from this initial set of data, we selected the top five most promising cars to further validate in vitro. Interestingly, uh, we also observed differences in both cytokine and cytotoxicity profiles by changing the chain orientation from light heavy to heavy light is a critical step in selecting and optimizing our cars. From our top candidates, we assessed the top five for cytotoxicity against, against an RMS cell line, specifically the RH30 cell line, which we engineered to also express a truncated CD19 for a positive control. On the left, we have co we cold cultured CAR T cells and RH30 cells at varying effector to target ratios. However, we know that sarcomas are also particularly sensitive to NK like killing, which can show up as non specific killing in the CTL assays. So on the right, we added unlabeled K562 cells at a 30 to 1 ratio with RH30 cells to remove some of this non specific killing. From this data, we can see that two car candidates particularly stand out, which are the 150 heavy light and the 154 heavy light. So it's interesting that of all of our candidates, both of them came from this heavy light uh, category, and we're still looking into whether or not this is a particular feature of uh, the architecture of the, of the car, or if this is just uh, kind of luck in the sense that these two cars worked best. We also tested several other cell lines for nonspecific killing. We tested Raji cells, which showed very little nonspecific uh, killing by these CAR T cells. We also tested K562 cells, which uh, alone showed varying degrees of nonspecific killing. However, when we used cold target inhibition again, uh, with a 31 to 30 to 1 ratio of unlabeled cells, we see that most of this is nonspecific to the car. So this does give us some insight into which of these cars are giving the strongest off-target effects. And to test these further, we did a stress test for these five candidates in which we repeatedly challenged the cells every two days with additional target cells, starting at either a one-to-one, -one, shown on the top right graph, or a one to four ratio shown in the bottom right graph. The cars were cold cultured with RH30 cells for two days. Then the remaining cell fractions were determined by flow, which is what's plotted, and the original ratio is reestablished every two days. This reprocess was repeated for a total of three challenges over six days. And as the, the graphs on the right indicate, this assay helped us differentiate some of the car's ability to repeatedly kill the tumor cells. And finally, cytokine production of these top candidates were tested and compared to the original FGFR4 car, which are labeled here as M410 and M412. And while several of the new cars particularly stand out, such as this 146 and 151 car, all of the new cars do substantially better than the originals, giving us hope that these will have better effects in vivo. And with all the in vitro data taken together, we chose to continue in vivo with two of our top candidates, their 154HL and 150HL. These were chosen for their specificity, improved cytokine production, and ability to respond to multiple rounds of, tar of target cells. 
Using NSG mice, we injected RH30 cells expressing our truncated CD19 into the lake muscle so orthotopically. Three days later, we injected 7 million CAR T cells either by IV or directly into the tumor on day seven. However, we still did not see any effect of the FTFR4 cars in these orthotopic tumors, despite their improvement in vitro. We were excited to note, however, that the CD19 car used as a positive control was able to delay tumor growth when injected by IV or by intratumor injection. This is suggested to us that the RMS tumors can be overcome but only on, under the right conditions. We believe that this difference between the FGFR4 car and the CD19 car is largely due to the number of target molecules present on the cell surface. The histogram on the left shows the FGFR4 expression on several sarcoma lines with RH30 shown in orange and with the quantification of the molecules per cell on the right. And the RH30 is here compared to several other Ewing sarcoma cell lines. And so while FTFR4 is much more highly expressed in the RMS cell lines than others, it's still far or about 30 fold lower um, expression than the CD19 target on our cell lines. And this suggests that the CD19 car is working better because it's seeing much more target. One way to overcome this, this issue is actually by lowering the threshold of the FGFR4 car so that it can work more effectively against uh, a low density antigen. This might be a necessary process for optimization strategy uh, for controlling RMS tumors. So in addition to the CAR T cells going into the mice, um, we also need to overcome some of the tumor defenses to allow the FTFR4 CARs to function in vivo. For this, we need to know what uh, defenses the tumor has. And to identify the most relevant pathways in RMS, we compared RH30 cells uh, in culture with and without interferon gamma treatment to mimic the response of T cells in vivo. The chart here shows the highest expressed soluble factors identified, and they're listed based on uh, RH30 treatment group. So each column here shows a different replicate, um, and the TC71 shown on the right side of this chart was used as a, uh, as a comparison. TC71 is a Ewing sarcoma line. And some of the top hits that we identified in, uh, for us to target include macrophage migration inhibitory factor, MIF, uh, TGF beta, uh, chemokine CCL24, leukemia inhibitory factor, or LIF, and IDO1. These soluble factors are all present in many other tumors as well which allowed us to build on the work from others to target these pathways, either with small molecules or by armoring our car. These soluble factors were confirmed by ELISA, NASA, in multiple RMS cell lines. So we used RMS 13 cell line, RD, and RD, uh, RH30, which I showed you previously. So here I'm showing several different graphs of um, the concentration of each of these soluble factors after interferon gamma treatment for either 24 or 48 hours. MIF, we only tested at 24 hours, and for each one of these cell lines. As you can see, there's some variation in the response between cell lines. However, for MIF, LIF, and TGF beta, we do see uh, increased amounts of these, um, these soluble factors compared to uh, either other tumors or are upregulated upon interferon gamma stimulation. <clears throat> so these are all likely important pathways generalized to RMS that we should uh, and may have to target. And 
As indicated previously, the introduction of T cells into tumor-bearing mice causes these tumors to respond by producing more stromal regions. So on the top, we have a mouse that only has tumor. On the bottom panels, we have a tumor plus T cells. And stained by H and E. On the bottom, you can see these long strands of light-colored fibers indicating stromal regions within the tumor. But we mainly see these upon T cell treatment. Furthermore, when these tissues are stained using a trichrome stain, uh, we see a bright blue stain, which indicates the presence of collagen. Again, this is much more uh, prevalent when we have activated T cells uh, in, the, uh, in the mice treated with activated T cells. Now on the right here, we have immunofluorescence staining of CD11B myelate population, as well as CD3 T cells, which are, we find to be in close contact with one another, and particularly localized within the stromal regions. And these results, uh, paired with the previous data um, from the early FTFR4 cars, suggest that these tumors are responding to treatment by building up more stromal regions and these regions are preventing T cells from entering the tumor lesion itself. Furthermore, we know that there are myeloid populations here, though we have yet to determine if these are myeloid-derived suppressor cells or um, tumor-associated macrophages. So, in conclusion, our early studies have defined a target in RMS to approach with CAR-T therapy. FTFR4 is highly expressed in both fusion-positive and fusion-negative RMS, but not expressed in mature healthy tissues. Furthermore, FTFR4 CARs can control RMS tumors in a metastatic model, but not, in, but not yet in an orthotopic model. My role in this project was to develop new FGFR4 cars. We have developed more effective FGFR4 cars in vitro by screening against a more membrane proximal fragment of FGFR4. And while these new FGFR4 cars still do not control orthotopic RMS tumors, we do see that our positive control and the well-developed uh, CD19 car is able to control uh, these tumors suggesting that there is a potential for CAR-T therapy um, or specifically RMS tumors. And a point I didn't elaborate on in this too much in, uh, in this talk, but important to note out, is that the intertumor delivery of CAR-T cells did not provide any benefit over the intravenous delivery. And this is likely because of the stromal regions that develop in the tumors. It's likely that our T cells are being um, our T cells are leaving tumor lesion itself and being specifically brought into these stromal regions where they have little to no effect uh, on the tumor growth itself. <clears throat> and finally, uh, we def define some of the tumor defenses that we need to overcome. And delivery of T cells induces stromal formation in RMS tumors which prevents the infiltration of T cells into the tumor, likely through the action of MDSCs um, or tumor-associated macrophages in the resulting stroma. Furthermore, multiple soluble, soluble factors in the TME may prevent CAR-T function, including THEF beta, MIF, LIF, and IDO1. Our next steps are to first optimize the FTFR4 CAR to function at a lower threshold of target molecules, and two, to overcome the tumor microenvironment. We think both of these approaches are going to be necessary in, in uh, this tumor model. We are building new tools to test these hypotheses. We now have an MIF, LIF, CCL24, and combined MIF, LIF knockout cell lines, or RMS, which we are testing in vivo. Uh, additionally, we are also targeting PDL1 signaling 
by using PD-1 blocking antibodies to see if that is sufficient in uh, improving the function of these FTFR4 cars. And on the card engineering side, we're developing several new cars that have been shown uh, by others to have improved in vivo function at low target molecule densities. It's shown in this cartoon in the bottom right. In summary, RMS, like many other solid tumors, will take a targeted approach to overcome. We're developing optimized CARs along with CARs with multiple, multiple target and logic gated CARs. We're also targeting many of the tumor defenses, such as TGF beta signaling. We're targeting LIF, MIF, and CCL 24 soluble factors, as well as PDL1, PD1 signaling and metabolic T cell suppression from IDL1. In addition to these molecular uh, defenses, we're also targeting, we're looking at the presence of immunosuppressive cells, such as tumor-associated macrophages and myelate-derived suppressor cells. We believe that this multi-targeted approach will be necessary, but will be able to overcome RMS tumors to make it hope for this novel therapy where they're most desperately, desperately needed. <clears throat> Finally, I'd like to thank the many people who contributed to this project, as well as, as, well as the funding sources. Thank you for your attention.